Does the person see anything now as they are dying? The hadith that we read about indicates that there is a type of consciousness to the soul when it is coming out of the body or close to its death. It has a consciousness of the angel of death and the angels around it. And you hear the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says the soul runs into the body, doesn't want to come out. The body is still alive, but it doesn't want to come out because it knows. So there is consciousness that it is coming out. And that's when the soul reaches the gargling point and right to the end over here, most likely. There are many stories that we hear about of people dying. And you personally have heard many of them uh, from people very close to me who, you, who say things as though there are presence of people in there, in the room, but they're not. But I mean, but we cannot see them. And I remember, uh, rahmatullahi my own grandfather who died. I wasn't there, but I was still a baby at that time. But I remember my grandmother telling me, Allah have mercy on her soul too. says, when your grandfather was dying, he'd tell me, please give me some water. I need to drink water. So give him some water. And then he'd say, sit me up. Sit me up and clean the house. Look at these beautiful guests. Open up some space for them. He used to say that. Allah. And not only from my grandfather, from many other stories like that, from close friends of mine. He drinks some water and say, I'm ready to meet them now. I'm ready to tell them to come in. Tell why are they outside. Tell them to come in. I don't want to mention names. Maybe some of you might know them. So we hear these stories and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows. But the point is, you will see it and you will know it. Sooner or later. Allah says in the Quran, Kalla sawfa ta'lamu. Behold, you shall soon come to know. Thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamu. And then again, I swear, you are going to know very soon. Aisha radiallahu anha, when she talks about when the Prophet sallallahu was dying on her, when he had her, his head between her neck and her chest, so on the sternum, and he was sick, sallallahu alayhi wa bodily sick, and he was dying. She says, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi suddenly lift his head up and put his arms out like that, as if he was saying, Rabbi, uridu Rabbi, my Lord, I want my Lord. Jibreel alayhi salam, in the hadith, it tells us that Jibreel had come to him and gave him a choice whether he wants to die or go to his Lord. Or the angel of death gave him that option. And Jibreel said to him, your Lord misses you. And he said, Rabbi, uridu Rabbi. I need my Lord. I want my Lord. ila Rabbi. I miss my Lord as well. So there is, you know, moments. And he is the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa of course. But these are some uh, narrations of the time of persons passing from here to the other life. <laughs> Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when a person dies, you must hasten to bury them quickly. Why? There are many wisdoms in that. The hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, hurry in burying your dead. For it, if, it, if it is a good soul, then rush it to its luxuries and to its na'im and rewards. Why are you detaining it? Take it so you can enjoy it very quickly. The soul will be waiting. But if it's a bad soul, you can get rid of it quickly off your shoulders. You don't want to hold a bad soul on your body. Get rid of it. There are other wisdoms to why we bury the people quickly, the dead. One of them, subhanAllah, it has this special effect on the family. It eases their pain. Ask any family who've had some people passed away. So long as they're still in the morgue or with the coroner or at the masjid, they feel the job hasn't been completed. And as soon as they bury them and they cry a little bit and they go home, the peace starts coming back slowly and the memory you forget a little bit afterwards and the pain goes away slowly as soon as it's buried Abadan. I have been to only dozens dozens and dozens of janazas and every time I see this the family beforehand oh I've seen families they've gone crazy in crying and, and, and misery as soon as the body's buried shortly afterwards khalas, they start to calm down it has an effect. It's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the body decomposes and decays. And it's out of respect and honor for the body. So, and out of mercy in, to the parents that they don't see this in the body. Because it starts changing form. This is a body. And this body will decay, ya akhwan. It goes into soil. The only thing that's left is the soul. And so this is a wisdom. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Kasr عظم الميت عظر الميت ككسره حي. Breaking the bone of a person dead is like breaking it when he's alive. What this means is, some people misunderstood it. They think that the dead person feels the breaking like as if he's living. No. The meaning of this hadith is the, that the, the treatment of the dead person should be respected as if he's still alive. So you honor them and treat them and cover their aura and treat them as if they're living. How would you treat a person that's living? You treat them like when they are dead. 
But in Islam, you must honor the dead person's body. For example, a woman washes a woman, a man washes a man, and you cover the awrah and you clean them up, and you put perfume on them, you make dua for them, uh, you can kiss them on the cheek to farewell them, you can do all these things, make dua for them, uh, handle the body with care, all these things. As if they're living. Don't cut it, don't torture it, or, you know, don't do any bodily damage to it. So we must hurry it to bury it. In a hadith of the Prophet, some yeah, I'm not sure if it's authenticity. However, it is in the books of those books that talk about janaiz and death. One of those books is called the Tadhkira. And it speaks about that the soul comes back and it can see it can see how its body is being washed and prepared. And if it's a good soul, it says, hurry up with it, hurry up with it. And if it's a bad soul, it says, woe to you, where are you taking it, where are you taking it? Nonetheless, the meaning of this is correct. Yani, the soul would love it to be quickened. If it is good and if it is bad, it doesn't want to go. Now, this is the body that we have. And there is a soul. Allah told us in the Quran, They ask you about the soul. You don't know much about it. Say, it is a matter that is only known by my Lord. I've only given very little amounts of knowledge. Rasul It is being told to him. So we have a ruh, a soul inside of us. This soul, my dear brothers and sisters, actually doesn't perish. According to the Quran and Sunnah, the soul stays. The body perishes. All these feelings that you feel right now on this world are different to the feelings that the soul feels. It is a little bit similar, if you want a bit of an example, to when you're asleep. You could probably look at a person who is asleep and you see their body sound asleep as if they're peaceful. Isn't that correct? But sometimes you may have a nightmare and you're struggling. And there are people who feel pain during the night. They think it's real. And then suddenly they wake up and they're breathing heavily. They say, why didn't you, you know, stop me? Why didn't you come and help me? If someone's there, you say, well, you were sleeping peacefully. And they don't see what you're going through. And sometimes you'd be in a total bliss and beauty in your dreams. And on the outside, you can't see it. It's just the body. Sleeping. Similar to that, but on, a, on more of a real scale. Reality. This is how it ha what happens when you're actually dead. The body, khalas, it's dead. You look at it, it's dead. It's decaying, it goes into soil. There's no more existence to it. But what actually goes into that next life is the soul. And the soul is returned to the grave. In a world that you and I cannot see or witness. Just similar to how when your body is there, but, and your soul is there, but you're asleep and it's somewhere else. But it's still there. That's why you're still alive. And it goes into a world called Al-Barzakh. If you open up a grave, you won't see this. But what this occurrence, all these things that are happening, they are happening in the world called Al-Barzakh.